Okay, Kurt, you're, so you're doing some announcing today for OAC. Uh, how far are we from Marlington? Uh, about 40 minutes, maybe 45 times. Dead West? Pretty close to Dead West, maybe dead a little west. Southwest. Yeah. Okay, so uh, coming to OACs, first off, did your son, who's state qualifier in Marlington, did he wrestle the OAC events? He did. Yep. Talk about these events and what, what it means bringing your son up and, and how it's, you know, it's a state qualifier. Mm -hmm. How has it prepared him for Division Two in Ohio and being a, a state caliber type guy, a state placer sure. type guy? Sure. Well, well, one thing, I like to tell this story a lot. Uh, I, I got my son, I let him start competing in wrestling in fourth grade. He never had a winning record in fourth to sixth grade. A losing record every year. Seventh grade got a little better. Eighth grade really started to win the majority of his matches. And then, uh, of course, in 7th se and 8th grade, we started getting to some of the OAC qualifiers, OAC tournaments, and uh, wrestled at state in 7th grade, was an alternate and got in the bracket, uh, didn't win a match, but it's, a stu it's stuff like that, you know, putting yourself in a position where you're competing against the best guys around, and then slowly but surely, you close that gap, maybe a little bit here, a little bit there, and you can compete at a higher level than you once thought was really possible. And I think that's a lot of what happened with him. You know, he, uh, you know, he, he put a lot of time in, wrestled a lot of Greco and freestyle the last three years. And then uh, I think it really all paid off. I mean, I think uh, the people we know, you know, we're very honest. We're very, very realistic. We thought that he was uh, an underdog to, to get into the third, fourth spot or the first, second last year. And uh, he pulled off on day two. He won three matches in a row over quality guys, all of which had beaten him at one point or another in his career. What does that mean to know that you're in a program where you can change, you can flip results? That's the biggest thing, right? Like sure. a lot of these kids don't think they can flip results. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've seen it as coaches who've been around for many, many years. You know, just because you win a match doesn't mean you're better than that kid next week. And uh, sometimes we've got to put that into our mindset. And, uh, you know, I think that's what uh, that's what this is all about. I mean, that's that's part of life. You know, things aren't going to go your way every single time, whether it's in business, in school, whatever. And if you can learn that in wrestling, then you can apply that to anything else. Do you think there's a lot of people, maybe even here, who lose focus of that and are just really about winning? Yeah, yes, I, I've seen it here. I see it at all levels. I've probably been guilty of it a time or two in my life as a coach and a dad, and uh, I think sometimes it's good for me to see, and for all of us, to see other people and how they act and how they deal with things, and we can learn from that. You know, I just when I when I watch you know some, some you know some, some some dads, some kids, they, you know, they take a loss here very very hard, and that's a good learning experience. But five ten years from now, that match is nothing but a practice match. It's nothing but a learning experience. You know, I used, to, I used to try to tell our guys in middle school and youth, listen, there's no such thing as matches. Matches are really just practice for when it really counts down the road. I think my brother wrestled a guy one year at the state tournament from Marlington. First okay. round, 89. Hagen. Does that sound right? Yes, yes. I think Rick, he was a state placer. Rick Hagen, I think. Yeah, my brother Chad yep. wrestled in the state tournament. Yep. I think uh, the guy was a state placer. The Hagen boys. Yeah, there were, there were two, two Hagen boys, Chuck and Rick. I think that was Rick Hagen. Yeah, you're younger than me in school. Stay placer, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so my brother Chad wrestled him. Absolutely. He was really tough. So you guys got a really good program there, right? But it's, a, you know, it's, it's you're, you teeter on D2 and D3 a lot, don't you? We have. Uh, right now we're smack in the middle. We're going to be, you know, like a lot of schools in Ohio, especially rural schools, we're slowly shrinking in enrollment. So it's a possibility down the road. You know, I, I look at it like this. When you think about Ravenna Southeast. How yeah, good that's they a, were. They're in D3. Now they're in D3. Yeah, yeah, Southeast. Yeah, because yeah, imagine the success they could have had with some of their great teams in yeah. the 90s and 80s if they were in D3 back yeah. then. Yeah, that's crazy to think about it. Yeah. You know, like, um, you know, because I'm from Oak Harbor, and Oak Harbor yeah. has dropped. They're in that D3, pretty solid yes. in that D3 yes, category. And I can tell you, my brother Chad wrestled in the Division Three mm -hmm. state tournament as a junior. Right. Did it place, and then he won the D2 the next year. That's amazing. Right? So, you know, how much do you like this breakdown of divisions here? They only went two this year because it's a COVID yeah. year. But the three-division breakdown in Ohio, and then OAC tries to emulate that. How do you like right. that? Well, I think as much as we can emulate, emulate what the kids are going to see when they're in high school, that's a good thing. Um, the nice thing here is we were able to run essentially 
essentially six separate tournaments. Three sessions yesterday, three sessions today. Completely cleared the gyms for safety in between the sessions. So we were able to get the kids a lot of matches very efficiently. Um, gosh, I, I mean, if there's one thing wrestling we need to do as a sport, I think it's to, as I always say, we, we, need, we need to be efficient with time. You know, I, I, I told our athletic director this, and I told the guys in our conferences. When football says they're going to kick off that ball at 7 p.m., they kick the ball at 7. When basketball says tip off, tip off is at 7, they tip it off at 7. If we say a dual meet needs to, is going to start at 7, we need to start it at 7. And I think that's one of the best things the OAC does. They're super organized up front, and when there's a start time, they meet it. I mean, I obviously love the organization. It's a great organization. Um, what did the Hamiltons see in Lake Erie College in Painesville, Ohio? Why? You know, um, so, Brent, you know, well, like, like I said earlier, you know, Brennan was a good wrestler in high school, and he had that great district tournament. He, um, you know, he, he definitely looked at Baldwin Wallace, where I wrestled. He looked at uh, Mount Union, which is where, of course, uh, he's put a lot of time which in. Which is probably 10 minutes away from Yeah, oh, easily, maybe less. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, and he's wrestling for Samurai Club, the Greco Freestyle Club, that wrestles out of Mount. And, uh, you know, I, and I think this is a compliment to Lake Erie. I had never, I barely heard of Lake Erie College until about 10 years ago. And when I met with Coach Jeff Breeze, Brennan and I went up for a visit. He, he, he was great. I mean, he, he spent the whole day with us. Uh, I think it's a smart thing he does. It was a beautiful summer day. He took us to the beach down at Headlands Beach. Yeah. We hung out down there. And, uh, you know, he explained, you know, they added wrestling about 10 or 11 years ago. Up until 1988, it was a all-girls school. I had no idea. And uh, I think Brendan liked it because I think he bonded with, with Jeff Brees, their coach. Great so, guy. I was so impressed with Jeff. He, 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 he's just such a personable guy. Yeah. Easy to talk to. And I think Brendan felt like they wanted him. And I think we all want to be wanted in one way or the other. And uh, I think that's probably what drew him there. I teach a mile from there, so oh, yeah. I drive by it every day. So what school is that? I, uh, Riverside. Riverside. And it, Riverside. It shared, they share a campus with Harvey. Okay. Like Harvey's High School abuts and touches Lake Erie College. Yeah, yeah, right they, next door. It's yeah. right next door. We're a mile away. Right, not under a mile, actually. I'm sure you know my old assistant coach, J.R. Richner. There you go. Yeah. Richner's brother was our first state champ. Yeah, 1988. Mike. Awesome. Okay. We got wrestling here. You got announcing to do. You got anything else for sure. me? No, thanks for coming out. We re really appreciate it. All right, Coach. Good luck to you guys. Hopefully, Thank we'll see you. you at Sparta Highlander, right? Yeah, you will. Yep. Well, I'll be there for sure. I'm, I'm the uh, I'm the announcer down there. Awesome. For Division Two State. Well, hopefully, you'll be coaching too. I hope so. I hope. Good luck, so. Coach.